Hello and welcome to this Crazy Talk 7 Pro video tutorial on advanced key editing and puppet settings. So the first thing we need to do here is drop in our actor. So I will go into the content manager and pick one out. Okay. And now we need a voice script. So I can choose to record my own, remember, with the toolbar, or I can choose one from the content manager, which is what I want to do. So here I have an evil laugh script, and this is the one I want to use. So I'll double click and I will create a lip sync only. <laughs> okay. So as soon as that stops, I'm going to trim the range of my project with this triangle here. Great. And now we will create a puppet clip in order to open the key face editor later on. So let's go up here to face puppet. And in previous tutorials, I mentioned that we have different animation profiles. Okay. We have male, we have female, youthful, attractive, wicked, grumpy, and goofy. And likewise, we have additional face controls for each of these profiles. So I know what I want to use. I want to use Wicked, and I will use the Angry face control. And let's test this out. I'll preview. And that's the one I want to use with the evil laugh. So let's give it a head movement, and I'm ready to record. Let's bring this back, and let's try it. Okay, that's pretty good. So now that we have this, uh, there's something else I'd like to show you. That in Crazy Talk, you also have the advanced settings for the face puppet. So what do I mean? For example, here we have this advanced settings where I can, I can set different weights to each uh, facial part. So in the feature selection, we have selected the nose and the eyelids. So for the nose, we have a value, a weight value of 100. And for the eyelids, we have a value of one for left eye and right eye, okay? So for example, if I preview this and I bring my mouse down, you will see that my, eye, my eyelids, they move a bit, but they don't close completely. That's because we only have a value of one. Now, if I stop this and I give this, let's say, a value of 100 to each one, you will see a change. So let's preview now and you can see my eyelids closing. Okay. So this feature is very, very useful for when you want to create intricate expressions with the face puppeteering. So let's close this and I wish to center my character now and we will open the timeline. Down here we will see the puppet clip that we just created. Okay. So what I want to do here. I wish to expand the motion clip so that we can see all the face keys that were added. And I will open that up and we will zoom in. And here we have all the face keys. Okay. And I can move my time scrub and each face key represented a movement for each different facial facial segment. So we have four tracks. We have a head track, we have a face track, an eye track and a shoulder track. So if we wish to open the face key editor, there's two ways of doing this. I can double click on any one of these little slots or I can open it right here. Okay. The face key editor. And inside we have three areas. We have the muscle area, which allows me to control specific muscles. We have the template area, which allows me to, to choose a specific expression style. Uh, depending on uh, my voice script, I can choose anything from happy, angry, fearful, surprised. Okay. And I can also use the modify panel to customize and, and use uh, different facial muscles in combinations. So let's do one at a time. I will first go to template and let's go to happy. So I can choose one of these. You can see happy. I can go to the category here and choose surprised. Okay. And I wish to choose fear and number three. No, not that one. Angry is the one I want. And number three. Here we go. Great. So as soon as I double click on clicked on that, you'll see that my character has that expression. And we just set a face key into the face track. So it's this key right here. Okay. If I move the time scrub forward, 
you will see that now, uh, since I had an, a, a neutral expression from the beginning, my character, right before my puppeteering kicked in, my character still has a neutral expression. So I can correct that. I can move the time scrub over that second keyframe here, and I can double click on angry. And if I want, I can lower the expression. See my character's face? Okay. And I can continue doing the same again on the next keyframe, angry, and lower that a bit again. Okay. And I can do that until the transition between the beginning of my angry expression blends with the puppeteering we created. So I can move this and you can see that it fits well. Great. Now let's try the modify panel. So as I mentioned, with this modify panel, I can control specific facial muscles or combinations of muscles. And this is what we will do here. Let me move my time scrub forward to where my character lowers his head for the last time, right there. Let me zoom in. Okay. So here, I can control specific facial parts. Um, let's say if I want to move my jaw up or down, I can do that here. And you'll see that as soon as I let go of this, look down in the timeline, you will see that a, a, a keyframe will be added in the face track. See there, it was just added. So one thing I need to mention, every time we use the modify panel and also the template panel, we will only set a keyframe into the face track, okay? Also, if I use the muscle panel here and I control specific muscles, these will set keyframes into my face track, okay? The only, the only um, uh, parts that will set a, a keyframe outside are the head, if I control them here, and also the eyes, if I select them here, okay? And also the shoulders, okay? And I can do that. So if I move these up, you can see that I'm controlling my character and I just set a keyframe inside. Now, another little trick I want to show you, if you wish to revert to your previous action, you can, you can always undo this or you can click on the default key, okay? And this will set your character to the original motion that you had before we were playing with this. So it's always a good idea to remember this part. So let me reset all of these, great. And we will go back to the settings I was, I was making with my eye here. Right there, I wish to set in a keyframe for my eyes. I want my eyes to close. So I will use the modify panel here and I will choose close eyes. That's left eye. I want to close both eyes and there we go. So we, we're just uh, simulating a, a quick blinking motion and right there. And let me show you a cool thing too. If I pull the time scrub all the way from the beginning, you will see that these sliders will, will, start, will start moving automatically. This is a cool thing here. Let me show you, look at the sliders. This is because when we created the puppet motion with the face puppeteering panel, that panel was actually using all these sliders to set in these keyframes. So that's good to know. Great, so we have our angry expression. We, we made our eyes blink at the very end. Bring this forward again, right there, okay. And now the last part I want to show you is how to use the muscle part to control a specific body part that is not in the face track. So I can zoom in here and by default, I will control, for this example, I will control my shoulders. So by default, my shoulders are in a neutral position. And if I move my time scrub forward here and I have my shoulder selected, right? So inside this area, I need to drag and I'll bring my shoulders up. Okay, then I will move my time scrub forward again and right about there. I want my shoulders to drop. Now I can choose to manually bring my shoulders down or better yet, I can copy paste the original one. Remember we had the, the original uh, a keyframe we have here is for neutral shoulders. So we can do this. I will grab this one, copy and I will paste. Okay, so then we go from neutral to up to neutral again. 
and I can keep on copy pasting these until I create a cycle. So let's do this. Let me undo, there we go. So I will select both of them and I will copy. Again, I can do this by right clicking or I can open this function, to, uh, function panel up here and I can copy. And I can count the spaces so that they're evenly set or I can do it, just do it visually. Right about there. Okay. So we go from neutral up, neutral up, neutral and up again. And if I play this back. <laughs> okay. Now, if you, if you think they're too slow, what I can do is this. I can select all of these and I can bring them closer. Okay. Bring them closer. Just like that. And this will make my motion faster. <laughs> okay. Let me bring these closer again. Let's get rid of that one. And delete this one. So let's test it. <laughs> okay, great. This last motion, we had my shoulders going up and then to neutral. So to make this easier, I'll delete this. And because the first one is neutral again, right? So I will copy paste all of these again. And I will continue. I will re repeat the same process. So this is an easy way. And I'll go copy these again and paste them again. This is a quick and easy way to save time in your projects. So let me zoom out and paste one more time. Let's try this. <laughs> okay, so a little too much. We can correct that at the end. And there's another little trick I want to show you. We can actually try to set our motions based on the wave form of our voice script. So I, I know that we have highs and peaks here, and I can try to time my motions with that waveform to give it a more lively, natural expression. Okay, so let's try to correct this. <laughs> right about there, let's delete these. Let's see what it looks like. A lot of this is trial and error until you, you reach a point where you think it looks good. Okay, this one is going up, right? So let's delete this one. This one is going to neutral. And the last one is also going to neutral, so I think they're okay. Okay, let's move this up one a bit. Okay, so you can play around with this until you find the best uh, movement for your, your, uh, for your character. Okay, great. And there we go. And that's how easy it is to create your own motion clips in Crazy Talk 7 and also how to use the key editor. Now there's one more thing I'd like to show you. I will reset my project here um, and I will use just, I, I will only use a, um, an auto motion because I want to show you that you can, al you can also convert your auto motion. Right here we have an idle one. We can convert our auto motion into a puppet clip and then we can edit these keyframes. So let me start a new project quickly just to make a point and I, and I will have my actor, the same actor, the same voice script. Let's see evil laugh. Where are you? Okay. And here I will create a talk mode. doesn't really matter. <laughs> okay. And I will choose a specific auto motion. Here I have a talk mode, remember, because that's the one we chose. So I can go into, into auto motion and he's talking and I can choose one here. Let's see which one looks best. What about shouting? Let's, let's give this a try. I'll drop this down here in the auto motion track. <laughs> okay, great. So as you see, we have no motion clip. We only have an auto motion create, uh, creating that animation. So look at this. We can actually right click and we can copy to motion track. And now I just created, I, I actually, I, I made this, this auto motion into a motion clip, into a puppet clip. And now I have the facility 
of opening all these keyframes that were generated by that auto motion and I can tweak them to what I want it to look like. And better yet, I can go into the motion clip folder, go into custom, and I can save this one. Um, we have shouting, right? So custom shouting. And I can save this motion clip in here for future use and I can tweak it when I need to. Okay, great. Well, that's it for this tutorial. I hope you enjoyed it and stay tuned for other ones. Thank you.